In this video, I'm going to show you why I love using shared actions so much. I think a lot of people are still confused by shared actions, and I get a lot of questions uh, on my, my YouTube channel about uh, why shared actions, uh, when should I use shared actions, under what circumstances uh, would I want to use shared actions, um, you know, and just a lot of people are struggling to wrap their, their heads around it. So hopefully today's video will help to explain some of that. Uh, it's one of those things where, you know, once you get it, you're like, aha, I get it. Um, and uh, hopefully I can, I can uh, help you with that process today. So I have uh, this slide set up on my particular slide here. And my intention is to do um, a click to reveal. Now, sometimes a click to reveal with multi-state objects is very simple. And all it requires would be to select the button in question and uh, select change the state of, and then you could change the state of, say, a text description to one of many multi-states here. But I have this set up to be a little bit more complicated than that. My buttons themselves have a selected state where the button turns blue and the text turns white. I also, in addition to the text that's going to be displayed on the screen here. You can see this is a multi-state object here for all the text. I also have an image that goes with each of those steps. So we're going to display a different image depending on what the learner selects. So when you create a shared action, you start with uh, an advanced action. All shared actions are created from an initial advanced action. And if I had to uh, use strictly advanced actions for a slide like this, I would need to write four different advanced actions, all labeled something different, and all. I'd need to keep track of a few different things. Uh, in this case here, let's start by building our first advanced action. We'll click on the Actions tab for the first step in my four-step process. And we'll change the on success action uh, of this case being a uh, shape used as a button to execute advanced actions. And we don't have any scripts written so far, so we'll click on the advanced action icon. Let's give it a, a name though, and I'm going to name it something uh, appropriate for this particular slide. Uh, in this case here, I'm going to call this uh, for item click reveal. So this is a for item click reveal. And the first thing we need to do is we're going to change the state of the button that's being pressed. So we're going to go in and we're going to select change the state of, in this case, button one to selected. But remember, there are three other buttons on this slide, so we want to change them all back to normal in the event that this is the first time the learner has selected a button. So let's change those. Button 2 back to normal. Button 3 also normal. And button 4 normal. We also want to change the state of our description and our image. So let's change the state of descriptions to, in this case, step one, because we are pressing button one. And we're going to change the state of our multi multiple images to also step one. So that's it. It's actually not a complicated advanced action. But if under normal circumstances or traditional circumstances, I would need to write this a total of four times for this slide. So I'm going to save this as an action. And this is really a best practice here because if I need to go back and make a new version of the shared action, I'll have the original four item click reveal advanced action to work from. But I'm also going to save as a shared action. And that's going to open up this pop up that you see here. I can call it the same thing if I wish. I can add a description here that makes sense. And all I need to do is 
create a parameter description for each of the objects and their states that I've affected change to. So in this case here, button one, but I'm not gonna call the parameter description button one because I could be using this shared action for button two, button three, button four. So I'm gonna call this selected button. Before I uh, put a description in for button one, button two, as far as the states are concerned, let's uh, give a label or description for button two, three, and four, because again, they could be any of those buttons. So I'm just gonna call this other button one and other button two and other button three. So in this case here, let's, uh, let's identify that the state that we're setting up for the selected button is the selected state. So we'll do that and we'll just say normal state for the other items as well. As long as you have a description, you're good to go. The remaining part of the shared action is to identify the description. So the text or descriptions, this is fine. And images. And we're going to say selected state for descriptions and selected state for images. And this might seem like a lot of extra work, but I think you'll see in a moment how easy it is to now apply this shared action to multiple other objects here. So let's hit save at this point. This is now saved successfully. I can close this and I'm going to change this from execute advanced action to execute shared action. And we'll now click on the action parameters icon so that we can start to fill this in. So for the first button, this is pretty straightforward. We're gonna choose the first button, which is button one, and the other buttons are button two, button three, button four. Your thought process is almost taken care of for you, and we're just gonna say selected, normal, normal, and normal. Scroll down a little bit in here and we'll choose uh, the item that is descriptions and the item that is images. And we're just going to say step one, step one. And that's what we're doing with step one for descriptions, step one for images, straightforward. Hit save. I'm going to repeat this process three more times with the other buttons here. So execute shared action, click the parameters here. So we're now clicking on button two. The other buttons are button one, three, and four. And we're gonna go from selected for the first one and normal for the other three. This is my descriptions and this is my images and we're doing step number two for those both. Save that as the shared action that it is. We'll do this for the third now. So just try to imagine what it would be like to write the advanced actions uh, for each of these buttons each and every single time rather than just making some object and state choices here. So now we're on button three. The other buttons are button one, two, and four. The selected state for button three and the normal state for the other buttons. And last but not least, the descriptions item and the images item. And we're going to step three for both of those. Save that. Here's my fourth item. Execute shared action. So button four and the other ones are button one, two, and three. The selected state for button four, the normal state for the rest. 
Let's select our descriptions item and our images item. And we're going to step four for both of those. So I'm going to hit save. And now we're good to go. Let's just do a preview of this project and take a look at it. So here we are with our slide. And if I select the first one, I'm selecting the button. It's also resetting the other three in case they were pressed already. And it displays the appropriate image and description. And it works for all of those quite nicely. And the advantage, of course, the real advantage uh, is that I'm able to produce, um, you know, it's a simple uh, interaction, but I'm able to produce a slide that's now entirely um, copy and pasteable. So if I copy this slide and I paste it at this point, I still have all of those shared actions intact, but now it's going to be pointing at the new objects and the new states automatically. I don't need to write a new advanced action for additional slides. I continue to use the same shared action, now a total of eight times in this project, without having to write additional code. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.